There's no special programming. It has nothing to do with going out and doing snatches and cleaning jerks. That's just the fun part. It's going to meet up with someone or they're going to call you out because you didn't show up today. CrossFit is, it is a community and the community is what builds the fitness. It's 3.30, I'm at home, fixing to head to the gym to PT. Uh, Thursday mornings I usually have a PT session and I work out later on in the day. I wake up at 2.30, 2.45 every morning. I usually work out a Monday through Wednesday and then Friday and Saturday work out early. Uh, the rest of the day I go to work for the railroad and then get off in the evening I go back for a second session. My name is Brandon Fontenot. I live in Lake Charles, Louisiana. My gym that I own is CrossFit Moss Bluff, also known as Open Gym. How long have you done just like coaching of CrossFit or personal training or anything? Uh, eight years. Eight years, wow. Yeah. I pretty much started about eight years ago doing CrossFit. Yeah, we've owned this gym for five years. You know, before CrossFit, I, was a run I ran for three years, was you know an avid runner, and then before that, I just worked. I didn't really do anything fitness-wise. Start the first set with the red. You're gonna go down 25 foot, I mean 50 foot, 90, 90 with the bell up. When you get to the 20, 50 foot, you're gonna turn around and come back. Karen, it's Karen's birthday today. That's the reason why she wore the same shirt as me. She, this is the reason why she wore the same shirt as me. It's not my birthday. No, <laughs> Quinn tells her every morning happy birthday. One day we're gonna get it right. When is your birthday? January. Oh. Well, I started CrossFit, it was actually on a whim. My wife said, uh, hey, why don't you try CrossFit? And I'm like, nah, I don't really want to do that. I didn't really know anything about it. I just, uh, you know, I looked it up and it looked crazy. All right, 5 a.m. Okay, so what we're gonna do here, we're starting a gymnastics, like, progression. The first thing we're gonna do is a two minute maximum bar muscle up, or chest to bar, or pull up. Because everybody looks it up and they see the games and they're like, well, you know, I can't do all that. And that's what their first instinct was. My first instinct was that when CrossFit, it was, okay, you got to do this. You know, you rich fronings and all this. And I'm like, well, I'm nowhere near all that. She said, we just try it out. So I went to a class on a Saturday and, uh, and uh, I couldn't even climb a rope. You know, I was supposed to be strong and couldn't climb a rope, so that was pretty embarrassing to me. Three, two, one, go. Well, I said, I'm never going to do this again. Well went home, next thing I know is 5 a.m. I'm going back, created a challenge in my life, and I started liking it, and uh, yeah, continued it after that, and got the bug after that. Do you feel how you're doing this? Yeah. I don't want you to do that. You're not doing a total ball. I just want you to go into the arch to holler position. I want you to focus on just bringing your chest in and out. That's it. It's the only CrossFit gym I've ever worked at worked out at and um, I'll never leave. I love it. I love the environment. I love the owners. I love everyone. We're in Reeves, uh, actually the town I grew up in, where I went to school, graduated high school, and was raised until um, I moved to Moss Bluff about a year ago. When we get all the way out here, you'll be like, that explains why he sounds like that. <laughs> sounds like what? Like the way I sound when I talk. <laughs> Which is what? I don't know. People say that I sound like um, a hillbilly or a talk like a hick. I actually grew up uh, in Reeves, Louisiana. It was a small town just north of Lake Trolls. Very small population. Uh, went to school there, high school there. I uh, actually moved out when I was 16. I wor started working for a farmer. Well, he kind of took me underneath his wing. And uh, actually, if you ask him today, he's, he considers to be my dad and I consider him my father. How are you? Good. He, he's the man who raised me. He's actually a father figure to me. I actually dated his daughter for years, and then uh, then he kind of took me under. You know, he was kind of there, kind of showed me how to work and how to pretty much do life. He farmed rice and had cows. He kind of made me his little partner, where I kind of started buying cows, and he would loan me the money and. I would buy, I would pay him back with when we'd sell calves or we'd sell the rice crop. He kind of taught me the ins and outs of actually how to work, work ethics. You know, don't let anybody else out work you. You know, you earn everything you got, uh, and nobody's just going to give it to you. Whenever I was with him, we went and sawed trees down from my house, and we sawed every tree down that, the house that I had, and uh, we built it from the ground up. It ain't much. It's uh, it's it, 
that we always built everything where there wasn't no waste. Everything it you didn't have you didn't have no wasted room. Everything you went into a room, it everything served a purpose. Continue that for four or five years until actually I met my wife and decided I need some insurance, and I went to work for the railroad then. Stayed there for about two years, and my dad got cancer. He 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 had gotten uh, throat cancer, and so we moved back. I was still working for the railroad. He still had cows and stuff, so we moved back to kind of help him out while he had cancer. And when he, you know, after he got through his cancer and chemo and stuff, at that point is when I actually started noticing that I would allowed my health just to get away from me. I, and when I looked in the mirror, I really wasn't satisfied with what I saw. Well, and with the help of him, he'll take credit for it. He saw somebody at a store one day, and he's like, hey, you know, in a few years, that's what you're going to look like. From then, I, that's whenever I bought my first pair of shorts after high school and got on a treadmill at a gym and I'd go early in the mornings because I didn't want anybody to see me in a pair of shorts because the way I was raised, you know, just old country, you know, you didn't wear shorts. Me and you wore work boots and work pants and that's what you did. I always wanted to share what I, what I had been through. I wasn't really super intelligent. Um, I'm not really book smart. I'm, you can hear by the way I talk that I'm not really first in vocabulary and you know all that but I, I was passionate about health and wellness it's because I my journey I, I knew that I, it worked for me and that if it worked for me I could help somebody else by just telling them my story so well I started coaching at the, at the gym that I joined about a year later I went and got my L1 that's whenever a buddy of mine really he said hey how about we go find us a building that we can do CrossFit in and we just get enough members to pay for us to work out there. The next month, COVID hit. We went to everyone, we said, hey, if you want to, you can cancel your membership until we figure all this out. Well, they all said, hey, we're behind y'all. And we continued on. About two months later, uh, we had a huge hurricane, one of the uh, largest hurricanes that ever hit Louisiana, Hurricane Laura hit us. So we, that didn't phase anybody. They still, they come every day, doors up, with no electricity. Well, we'd have a generator, like I said, hooked up. And uh, if, for music, we'd just pack a truck up and start playing music. So they stayed with us through COVID, through the hurricane, and we made it through the hurricane. Last year, I asked my daughter and son and my wife, said, hey, um, I really want to make the games. Um, but is it something y'all wouldn't mind me doing? I mean, are y'all okay with that? Because y'all know what it's gonna take to do this. And if they wouldn't mind doing that because it was gonna take time away from them. And I would be going to bed early in the, at night, waking up early in the morning, and uh, they were they were on board completely. The you know, All the people that are here and the people that are watching back home, it just, uh, it, it's, it just means the world. So nah, that's what I like. And like I said before, I didn't have much family growing up. And the, every one of these people, I can, I, I, I can sit here and point out one person and tell them this story about what we did together. Every, I can tell you a story with each and every person that's here. I can probably tell you the first day they came. I can tell you their kids' names. I can tell you what car they drive. I, they just, and they could probably tell you the same thing about me. Yeah, I'm here uh, competing. Um, we have probably half our gym is here with us. Uh, I think it's 51 or 52 people, including their children. Back in March, we had some that already started booking hotels, and they didn't even know I was going to qualify. But they said, "Hey, we're going. We know you're going to qualify. We have faith. You're, you're making from all walks of life that are, that are here with us now. I mean, that people that just started the gym, to the people that's been in with us from the day one we, that we opened. We have pretty much every coach that we have from our gym is here with us today. It's automatic, kick up and go. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. Uh, and, and from the get-go, when we, we kind of could foresee him qualifying when he was getting in that, that 38th, 37th spot, people were already booking their rooms. I mean, it was automatic. Like, a lot of people didn't even hesitate. They were checking the rooms over here and, and getting set up to, to come to Alabama, changing their work schedules and taking vacation. And But that just speaks volumes for who he is because he, he gives a lot to the gym and uh, people want to return that favor, so. There's no special programming. CrossFit is, it, it is a community and the community is what builds the fitness. The programming doesn't build the fitness. 
it's it's holding me accountable. My wife's ordering an 8 a.m. class, and these other ladies that are more like-minded like her go to that 8 a.m. class because they feel comfortable with her. It has nothing to do with going out and doing snatches and cleaning jerks. That's just the fun part. It's going to meet up with someone or they're going to call you out because you didn't show up today. <laughs> Having that kind of support, it means more to me than a, a lot of people won't ever understand. When you're 15, 16 years old and you leave home, you kind of feel like there's nothing left. You know, you don't have much family. And I look at a lot of people growing up and it was a lot of things I, I was always jealous. Buddies of mine would, hey, I'm going to mama's house to cook, that she's cooking supper for us tonight. Or I'm going to grandma's house, this and that. And, I never had any of that. Whenever I opened up a gym, I thought that I was going to be able to help to share the stuff that I already got through as far as becoming healthy. I thought maybe that was what I was going to do. But in return, they gave me the family that I never had. <laughs>